Hey guys, what's up? I'm Noah, this is Analog Resurgence, and today I'm taking a look at 9.5mm motion picture film. Now when we're talking about motion picture film formats, we all know that Kodak is kind of the option for what's out there right now. And especially for the amateur filmmaking crowd with Super 8mm and 8mm and 16mm, they've really introduced some formats over the years that have kind of cornered that market. But back in the early days of getting film into the hands of amateur movie makers across the world, Kodak definitely wasn't the only name in the game. Now in 1923, Kodak introduced 16mm film, which was really the first kind of big amateur movie making format out there. But a year before that, in 1922, a French company called Pathé introduced their own format for amateurs. This was 9.5 millimeter film. Now you can be forgiven if you've just never ever heard of 9.5 millimeter film before, because it's not really widely available anymore out there, aside from a number of enthusiasts across the world who work hard to kind of keep it alive. But it's definitely a much more obscure and shorter lived format than a lot of the other more current ones. And it was one of the very first ways for a lot of people to be able to watch movies at home for themselves. Nine and a half millimeter film was really primarily popular in Europe. It was introduced in the 1920s by the French company Pathé, along with its company Pathéoscope in the UK. And originally it was only introduced as a format to watch movies on and project at home. You would buy a Pathé baby projector and then you would buy 9.5mm film prints that you could watch at home for yourself, of popular movies and shorts that were available at the time. These really early projectors were all hand cranked models and the films would typically come on 30 foot reels that would run for about 90 seconds through a projector at hand cranked speeds. There are so many really interesting nine and a half millimeter prints out there that a lot of people go after as collectors. A lot of black and white silent short films were available, such as ones from Charlie Chaplin and Harold Lloyd. These movie reels also had a really ingenious and clever way design of being able to save a certain amount of film when they were being projected. When you were watching silent films that had title cards in them, these nine and a half millimeter reels would have special notches on those title card frames. Now, instead of repeating this one title card over and over on the film, this notch would disengage a section of the projector and it would hold on that title card frame for a number of seconds before moving on. Now this is in big contrast to all the other formats that we're more familiar with like 35mm and 16mm, which would just repeat those title cards over and over for a duration on the film for as long as it took you to read it. Which meant that 9.5mm was much more economical in that regard in terms of being able to watch silent movies with those title cards. There were also catalogs of 9.5mm films that you could get for your projection system and watch at home. Very similar to what Kodak had set up later on with their 16mm Kodoscope library of just different films and features that you could rent or buy. Now of course one of the most unique things about 9.5mm film is exactly how it was laid out. Now the film is of course 9.5mm in width, but unlike most other types of film, it's perforated right down the middle. Now when we look at things like 35mm or 16mm film, the sprocket holes are always down the far edge of the film, but 9.5mm has all these sprockets moving right down the middle. Now the Sprockets are used just like any other format, by projectors and cameras to be able to advance the film. Now the actual frames on 9.5mm film are exposed in between these perforations, with one right in the middle on the top and one right in the middle on the bottom. And again, this is something that you would just never see with Kodak's film, with 35mm, 16mm, 8mm, and Super 8, all having perforations down either one side or both sides of the film. While 9.5mm was initially just introduced as a projection only format, Pathé did introduce 9.5mm amateur cameras the following year in 1923, and this lined up with when Kodak was releasing 16mm cameras and projectors as well. These are some examples of really early 9.5mm cameras, and they share some similarities in terms of designs with Kodak's early 16mm and 8mm cameras as well. They have very few features on them and usually just contain a single lens for you to shoot with. They're very much just aimed at amateurs to be very simple to use and load and to shoot with. 9.5mm film actually came on special cartridges though that you could just pop into the camera. Whereas 16 millimeter and eight millimeter was just film that would typically come on a roll. These nine and a half millimeter cartridges are really simply designed and easy to load and just drop into your camera. And they actually are really similar to a system that Fujifilm would introduce decades later called single eight film. The unexposed roll of film sits at the top of the cartridge here, and then it has a portion where it would be exposed through the camera at the front here before rolling up to the bottom of the cartridge there. Now nine and a half millimeter film wasn't that short lived and was actually made by a variety 
variety of companies for about 40 years before its full decline. You could initially just get black and white film that you could shoot through your cameras when they were initially released in the 1920s, but later on there was 9.5 millimeter color film that was released as well. There was even 9.5 millimeter Kodachrome color reversal film available for these cameras in the 1950s. In the 1930s, you could also get 9.5 millimeter sound, prints, and projectors as well. When Pathé started putting optical soundtracks down one side of their film, very similar to what Kodak was doing with their 16 millimeter format. You would be able to buy actual movies that had sound on them, and then you would be able to put them through a nine and a half millimeter sound projector. Unfortunately, nine and a half millimeter as a format took a big hit during the 1930s when World War II started. Because Pathé was largely a European based company in the UK and France, they were heavily impacted by the war. This largely hurt the ability to supply a lot of this film during World War II. And as a result, military operations and journalists were all using Kodak's 16 millimeter and 35 millimeter formats during those years. After the war, Pathé did continue to make nine and a half millimeter film, but of course by that point, Kodak was kind of the name in the film industry. And by 1932, Kodak had released eight millimeter film as well as an even cheaper alternative to 16 millimeter film for amateurs. Unfortunately, Pathé shut down production of nine and a half millimeter film in the early 1960s. And over the following years, it really just faded out of mainstream use. In the decades since though, there have been a wide variety of nine and a half millimeter enthusiast groups that have popped up all across the world that really like the format and are really dedicated to trying to keep it and its history alive in some way. There are all these different magazines and publications from the earlier days of enthusiasts getting together and talking about nine and a half millimeter film out there. And now of course there are forums and websites that allow all these nine and a half millimeter enthusiasts from the world over to kind of communicate and share their collections and talk about cameras and the film and kind of keep this format alive in some way. And of course I'll throw a link to some of those interesting resources down in the description below. Currently today in 2019, in my research at least, I was unable to find anybody in the world that was currently producing fresh nine and a half millimeter film for those old, old cameras. There are a number of people out there who are really interested in getting this film into production again and trying to obtain these special perforation machines that would be able to cut down 35 millimeter film and perforate them properly to run through these cameras. But it seems that the last time anybody was actually producing nine and a half millimeter film was a few years ago at this point. Now I could be wrong about that and there could be some people somewhere that are producing nine and a half millimeter film currently or are at least setting up to do so very very soon. And if anybody has any sort of information on that I would love to hear more about it because it's such an interesting endeavor and would really breathe life into such a niche niche format full of these really old vintage cameras. So nine and a half millimeter film is definitely something that not a lot of people have heard about. And even I myself have never actually gotten a chance to hold a nine and a half millimeter print or negative and take a look at it. Even when working in a film lab, it was something that we had the ability to digitize, but was not something that we ever got a chance to. But I do think that it's a really interesting format and it's really interesting to learn about these early days of how amateur movie makers across the world were being able to shoot their home movies or just document their own lives or make their own movies just for fun. Hey, thank you guys so much for watching and checking this out and I hope that you enjoyed and learned a little bit more, especially about something that is super, super niche. And subscribe if you haven't done so already as I continue to post new stuff about analog formats all the time about different histories and cameras and film formats and all this different stuff that's out there. And if you're at all interested in supporting the channel, there is a link to the Patreon in the description below. You can check that out and see what that's all about. Any sort of that support or funds will be able to help me do more of this analog stuff in the future and branch out and just explore more of these different formats that I talk about in the videos. So thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys soon.